Okay. Um, oops. Welcome back, everyone. Somebody's mic is not working. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pick up from where uh, we left off. Um, I think Shani's question, can we prophesy, use our gifts at church? Just want to make one comment there. Like when it comes to ministering in the prophetic, um, so we do it, um, uh, you know, recognizing the divine order in the church. You know, that's the main thing. You know, the Lord has placed uh, people in spiritual leadership, probably the pastor of that church and uh, maybe elders who are there. So the right thing to do, you know, if, uh, if you want to be moving in the prophetic is, you know, just wait for that time, you know, maybe... Um, uh, the pastor says, okay, if, if anyone has a word uh, for the church, you know, maybe you can share it right now. You know, that would be the right time to share um, at, at that moment. Or maybe the pastor would say, uh, why don't you pray over each other? And if the Lord has a word, maybe speak that word for that person. You know, there could be that flexibility of freedom in some churches. And uh, maybe that would be the right time to do. Uh, so, uh, if there is a specific word for the leadership, um, it, it would be best uh, to write it down maybe and share it with the, you know, the leadership or the pastor after the service, uh, or if it's for someone in the church relating to the leadership, you know, something like that. Uh, again, to wait for that right time, you know, uh, and then share it with the leadership. So th that is what I meant when I said, you know, you share it with the leadership. So all these factors are there um, so, so that we don't, uh, we do it in the right way. Yeah. I hope that helps, uh, Shani. Okay. Uh, I think Sheba, your mic is unmuted. Okay. Your mic is muted. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I thought it was unmuted. Fine. Okay. So, um, so we, let's move on to... Um, Okay, let's, let's just move on to um, a few other questions. You know, a few, few other questions that we might have. Do we have to tarry or do we have to wait, uh, you know, in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Do we have to wait for, let's say, a week or 10 days or 20 days in order to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay, so the thing is this. We see both, right? Uh, in Acts chapter 2, we see that the people were actually gathering together and praying. And they were waiting, but they were waiting for um, the Lord was actually releasing the baptism the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He was waiting for that Kairos moment, which was the Feast of Pentecost. And after, soon after that, we see that it was Samaria or Ephesus or Cornelius' house. We see that it was happening right then and there. So, so the thing is this, that we can actually pray, believing, expecting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? So we don't have to necessarily wait or tarry, you know, as the old English word is tarry in order to be baptized in the Spirit. Okay. Another question. Okay. I think this we know. Do I need to have hands laid on me to receive baptism? The ob obvious answer is no. God can use, uh, uh, um, you know, a, a brother or a sister to pray over us, but we don't necessarily, if in the absence of, you know, somebody to pray, Lay, lay hands and pray, um, that doesn't mean that the Lord cannot uh, fill you with the Spirit. You know, for me, it happened. Nobody was there, right? And I actually started praying in tongues. There was one brother who actually prayed over me, but six months later, when I actually started praying in tongues, it was just me. Um, in fact, it was the most unspiritual of circumstances, situations. I was in traffic on my bike, going to meet a client, I was working in sales at that time, and that's how it, you know, in the midst of traffic, you know, the honking and all the noise and all the uh, exhaust smoke and all that, I started praying in tongues, right? So, okay. Do I need to be baptized in water before I can pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Obvious answer is no. You know, there's no set order um, for that, right? Does tongues always have to be understood? I think we addressed that, right? There are different kinds of tongues, and I would um, encourage us to read that publication, The Wonderful Benefit of Praying in Tongues, in order to uh, understand the full, uh, you know, the, the, the expansion of or the scope of the benefits or the blessings that the gift of tongues brings into the life of a believer. Okay, it's not just edification, there's so much more, right? 
Okay. So, so what do I do in order to receive this beautiful, wonderful baptism of the Holy Spirit? Okay. First of all, understand that it is for us. Uh, it is for you. It is for me. Right? Um, if there are any doubts, if there's any apprehensions uh, about, oh, you know, I have been living a kind of life that is not pleasing, so maybe God will have me wait till I come to that place of being holy in order for me to be baptized. Right? Understand that the Holy Spirit, you know, He comes to lead us into holiness, right? From where we are to progressively walk in holiness and sanctification. Not the other way around, that we wait till we are sufficiently holy or sufficiently consecrated for him to fill us, right? It's the other way around. He's saying, I want to come and I want to change you from the inside out, right? And I want to fill you, baptize you, release these gifts within you so that you will be built up, edified, from the inside out okay so i just need to uh, keep aside all these sense of worthlessness if it is there a sense of you know maybe i i don't deserve this put it all away right the lord jesus he went to the cross he died on the cross while we were yet sinners right while we were yet sinners he didn't wait for us to be holy enough, good enough, and then go to the cross. Why do we yet sin as he went to the cross? And the Holy Spirit, you know, he has come. So because by the Spirit, we can put to death the deeds of the body, right? In cooperating with him, he wants to, not only for personal consecration and holiness, but also to minister to a world that is outside, right? Dying world, to reach out um, and to be a witness with power. Okay, right. So... Who's the person we look up to? It's Jesus. It's the Lord Jesus. Right? He is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He's the one who baptizes us. It's not the man of God, woman of God, nothing. It is the Lord Jesus who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. So we, we look up to him and we uh, put our faith in him. And we take a step of faith. Okay? Um, this is what we see in Galatians 3 and verse 13 and 14. Galatians 3, verses 13 and 14. I'm in chapter 4. I'm just looking at a few points here. Um, it says that uh, Paul is writing to this church, which is trying to get back into the law, doing some things, you know, those steps. I need to do this, these things. I need to keep this thing in order for God to use me, in order, for, in order for the Spirit of God to move in me. He's writing to them and he's saying, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay. So that is how we receive the promise of the Spirit. It is always through faith. Right? So we put our faith in him, in his promise, in his instruction, and we receive the promise of the Spirit. Okay. Um, do I need to tell the Lord how you know, desperate I am? Or do I need to tell him how important it is for him to fill me? Right? Do I need to tell him over and over? And again? Do I need to use these words to convince him? Right? Sometimes that goes on. You know, I need to convince God. I need to tell him, show him how desperate I am. Well, that desperation and hunger and faith can be in your heart. But we are not trying to convince God. We are not trying to arm twist God in any way. Because he's already placed it, established it. And so he's more than willing to pour out his spirit upon us. Right? More than willing. So uh, we don't, we're not trying to you know, uh, lie, lie, twist his arm or in any way. Expect. Expect. Expect to speak in other tongues. See, the thing with, um, you know, the gift of tongues is that, um, or, or with us, is that we can only speak one language at a time. Yes or no? I can only, you know, I'm, right now I'm speaking in English and I can speak only in English at this time. So I need to stop speaking in English. Hindi mein baat karne ke liye. 
right? I can't speak both English and Hindi at the same time. Right? So that's the thing with gift of tongues also. So many times we speak in English, we are pray or in, your, in our own language that we know, and we are praying and we are saying hallelujah and praise the Lord, and we are wondering why is nothing happening? <laughs> well, the Holy Spirit will give us the words, but we need to speak it out, and we can only speak one language at a time. Just understand that. These are some practical things, right? Another thing to understand and to, uh, you know, really uh, take a hold of is that the words or any language is made up of sounds. The word that I speak is a sound. It's a, you know, this word sound, it's a sound and which you understand, which you take in and we understand. It's a sound. Similarly, the utterances given by the Holy Spirit are sounds, words which are made up of sounds. And when we don't understand the sounds, we hold back and don't speak them out. It's a thing, our rational mind kicks in. Don't speak it, <laughs> right? Your mind says, don't speak it, you don't understand it, this sounds weird, forget it. Understand that language, words, these are sounds. And when we, yes, it is true that you know, when we speak, Paul says, my understanding is unfruitful. So we don't understand it, understand these sounds. But when you sense in your spirit this word, I need to speak this out. I need to pronounce it. I need to say it or sing it. Do that. Do that in faith. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are some things that we just wanted to address, right, um, about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, so what we're going to do now, uh, you know, if there's, if there's any other question about what I just shared about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, we can address that. Any, any questions here? Yeah. Yeah, so who were they speaking to? Who were they addressing? Is that your question? 1 Corinthians 14. Hmm. So, so the thing is this, you know, we, we learn about different kinds of tongues. You know, when we see there are tongues for personal edification, there are tongues as a sign for the unbeliever, there are tongues for intercession, and so on, right? So, so when we understand that hey, this is the scope of tongues, these are the different kinds of tongues that we see, then, uh, yeah, so the, we, we, that's for the purpose of learning. But the thing is to just go ahead and you know, pray, go ahead and speak it out anyway. Right? So, uh, so when you know that there are different kinds of tongues, then this makes sense. Right? So they were, what were they doing? They were actually praying and they were magnifying God, magnifying the Lord in different languages. Right? And it was a sign to the unbelievers at that time. So we can say, okay, this is a tongue as a sign to the unbeliever. There's something supernatural was happening. And that sign pointed them to salvation, brought them closer to them. So tongues as a sign for the unbeliever. Tongues for personal edification. Paul says, I pray in tongue, I don't understand it. But I, my spirit is being edified. Right? So, um, yeah, so it's not for interpretation. It's not that. No, it's just I'm being edified. I finished praying for extended hours of time and I come out of it with a good strength uh, and I'm being edified, refreshed. So that's, that's the other. Um, so, so in that sense, there's no contradiction and because of the use of tongues, different kinds of tongues that we see. Right? Okay, so what we're going to do now is pray.
And uh, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to you know, fill us, baptize us in the Holy Spirit. And those of us who are watching online, you know, right where you are, just pray. Uh, we've heard the word and we've seen that um, those of us who have never been baptized or never, you know, uh, the gift of tongues is something that is not part of our lives. Pray believing that right? the Lord is for us, for you. And uh, pray believing that the Lord, uh, he's actually desiring. So you step out in faith, and we're going to pray right now. Okay? And for those of us here also, uh, we're going to do the same thing. Okay? We're going to pray, and then I, I'll ask Pastor Nancy also to come and pray. So we're going to just pray uh, you know, uh, over everyone right now. You know, generally, just pray and say, in, even as you pray, pray and say, Lord, you're the baptizer, so baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, you're the baptizer. You release the gift of tongues in me. You release all the gifts in me. Right? And go ahead and take that step of faith. And even as the Lord gives the utterance, let man speak out. You know, let us as believers speak out those words. Speak out those words loud enough for you to hear. Okay? And I just want to say, online students, you know, whatever is happening in person can happen online as well. We've had testimonies of people, you know, um, just receiving words of knowledge and also you know, beginning to pray in tongues for the first time right where they were, right? So if it is conducive, you know, wherever you are, you just begin to pray out in, uh, in tongues, you know, pray out, out loud so that you can hear if it is conducive uh, for you. Okay, let's, shall we pray, right? Uh, let's all, why don't we all stand up? Okay. Let's pray. You pray in your heart, you know, just pray, Lord, I uh, thank you. Thank you for the word. Thank you for these instructions. Thank you for these promises. You know, you pray to the Lord and you just invite the Lord uh, to do great things in you today. Right? And, um, and pray that simple prayer and say, Lord Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. And why don't you just open your mouth and uh, just pray, right? Uh, just say, Lord, fill me, baptize me, anoint me with the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And those of us who already pray in tongues, you know, just between you and the Lord, just want to request you to begin to start praying. Um, just between you and the Lord. Maybe you want to sing out in tongues, you know. Uh, Paul talks about that, you know, I pray with the understanding, I pray in tongues. I sing with the understanding, but I also sing with the spirit, he says. So, yeah, uh, just begin to do that, right? Just between you and the Lord. Yeah, and you can also expect the Lord to release the other gifts of the Spirit, right? Maybe it's a word of knowledge, maybe it's prophecy, maybe it's a word of wisdom. And um, yeah, so we, uh, we perceive, right? We are keen in our spiritual perception. We're saying, okay, what is it, God? Um, what is it that you're putting in my heart? What is it that you are, um, what is it that you are, you know, showing in my heart is it something visual is it a scripture that you're quickening is it an impression like a weight on my heart whatever it is we are you know we're just spiritually perceiving it right sensitive to whatever the lord is putting in our hearts okay let's just pray father god we we just want to thank you for this time oh god and according to your word we pray right now and we ask oh god that you would baptize oh god each and everyone here baptize in the holy spirit baptize in the holy spirit lord jesus we we call upon you because you are the baptizer and so we ask oh god and say lord Baptize us, oh God. Baptize me. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. No, just say, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. In your own words, in your own language, just tell the Lord, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit and release those gifts in me. 
release all the gifts in me god and the gifts of tongues lord release it in me god amos and just begin to just thank the lord at this time just thank the lord and say lord i thank you for the baptism of the holy spirit i thank you for filling me with your holy spirit i thank you that lord you're doing this for me and in me i thank you lord just go ahead and thank the lord you know and pray with your heart you know don't worry about the person standing next to you uh, don't worry about that you know um, um yeah just between you and the lord and your hunger for the lord and your uh, your desire for more of god right we all want to live a spiritual life in the higher plane uh, higher than before so we want to step into that higher realm so just go ahead and pray out hey Yes God we thank you Lord we thank you we thank you we bless your name Lord we thank you Father God thank you thank you for filling us thank you for Lord thank you for filling us God ero mo semetere thank you for the gifts of the spirit oh God to edify the church oh God to edify each one of us God we thank you Lord we thank you we thank you your desire is God that we might be witnesses with power oh Father God that we might witnesses in power oh Father God Oh God we thank you that is your desire and your will oh God and so we thank you right now we thank you for what you are doing right now master lord even as we stand in that place of faith and expectation god we thank you for what you are doing we thank you for the infilling we thank you for the baptism we thank you for releasing oh god these gifts in us oh father god we thank you for releasing the gifts of the spirit we thank you for the river oh god that has been released to flow oh god we thank you master we thank you lord we thank you we thank you jesus we thank you jesus just go ahead step out take a step of faith and begin to pray as the holy spirit gives the utterance begin to speak out to say those words uh, pronounce those sounds as the holy spirit gives utterance right just begin to do that begin to do that just between you and the lord just pray out loud enough uh, all of us are believers here so just uh, with the understanding right we just pray loud enough so you can hear hey oh Okay. I just want to ask Pastor Nancy to go ahead and just lay hands and pray. So we will just come and lay hands on some of us and pray for more of God to fill, for the gifts of God to be released. So uh, we're going to do that, right? Online students, thank you. Uh, let's continue to do that, uh, and uh, be back with you um, in some time. Just continue to pray. Continue to uh, pray in the Spirit. Uh, just can join you in a minute.
Oh, yes, Lord, we worship you. We thank you. Thank you for this time in your presence, oh, Father God. We press in for more, God. Yes, Lord, as your word declares, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. And so we continue to pursue, we continue to desire, Lord. We continue to press in for more of you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we hunger and thirst for you, Master. Yes, Lord, because only you satisfy, oh God. We pray, God, Lord, that you would fill us, continue to fill us, that you would, we would do that every day, God, that we would, Lord, seek you every day, that you would continue to fill us every day, oh God. Yes, Master, we thank you, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I think some of us are here, still here, online students. Um, yeah. Um, so just wanted to uh, check, uh, like, did anyone speak in tongues for the first time? You know, when I say speak in tongues, maybe it could be a word, it could be a phrase. Anybody, you know, you sense that, okay, you prayed for the first time. Anyone else? If, um, you know, when I, when I say pray in tongues again, we think, okay, I'm speaking long sentences, you know, uh, not like that. It could be, it just starts with a phrase. It could be a syllable right? Uh, but then you need to be faithful to speak it out, you know, speak it out, okay? Anybody online? Um, um, anyone? You began to pray uh, for the first time, okay? I don't see anyone, uh, okay? Maybe you've all been praying uh, all this while, okay? So, so I just wanted to encourage us, okay? Um, like maybe you're saying, okay, I didn't start praying now. Uh, I, I didn't start praying today, Okay. So there will be many more opportunities, right? Especially even this afternoon when we have the supernatural uh, hour. I'm talking to the in-person, um, on-campus students. Um, there will be times to just worship the Lord and uh, praise Him, and and um, and you step in, you know, take that step of faith and uh, begin to thank the Lord and begin to worship the Lord and begin to speak those words that he's putting in your spirit, okay? Sometimes we cancel out saying, oh, that doesn't sound like tongues. I, I sense something, but that doesn't sound like tongues. We cancel it out, right? Just go ahead and speak it in faith. And you'll realize that when you speak that word, another word follows. When you speak that word, another word follows, okay? Same goes for uh, our online students as well. So we're going to wrap up our, our session right now. Online students, we'll meet again tomorrow, uh, 9 a.m. Um, okay, there's somebody who's uh, undergoing surgery on Sunday, Lucy. So let's all pray for Lucy for, um, yeah, uh, I don't know, surgery for what, but then let's just pray, right? Let's pray for the Lord's hand upon her. Okay, this is Lucy Samuel, so let's pray. Father, we, uh, we just agree together, Lord, as a class, as students, God, we, uh, we just agree together and we pray, we come before you right now for Lucy, Lord. Um, whatever reason for which she's undergoing surgery. We, Father, we pray for the manifestation, Lord, of the finished work of the cross, of healing uh, on Lucy right now. In every single cell and tissue and muscle and bone in our body, God, uh, in every organ, oh God, the finished work of the Lord of healing to be made manifest. And we call every single cell healed and restored in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would bring about a restoration of health, that you would bring about a restoration of healing, oh God, uh, in, in Lucy right now, Father God. We pray that uh, you would remove all kinds of fear or apprehension or anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus. And we, we call all those things to be removed in Jesus' name. And uh, we pray for the release of the kingdom of God. Please pray for a release of the rule and reign of the king uh, over Lucy right now, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you so much, online students. Um, we're going to stop right now. Yeah, online students, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and just declare uh, healing over Lucy and continue to declare that. Thank you so much.